Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to do conservation of energy problems in physics in our energy unit that we've been talking through. We're actually getting towards the end of this energy unit here. And first off, I want to talk about what we mean when we're talking about the conservation of something in physics. And we mean the total amount of something, whatever it is you have before an event, is equal to the total amount of something you have after the event. You're familiar with the idea of conservation of mass. This is actually a really big idea in chemistry as well. And that is the total amount of mass you have before an event, like dropping a phone, for instance, or a chemical reaction, is equal to the total amount of mass you have after the event. The only way it would change is if you had a nuclear reaction. We're not worrying about that right now. So we could say, in a similar way, we're going to talk about the conservation of energy. And that means the total amount of energy you have before an event is equal to the total amount of energy you have after the event. And we're going to talk about this total energy as mechanical energy. So that means our total potential plus our total kinetic is going to be our total mechanical energy. So it's going to look like this. Your potential plus your kinetic initial is equal to your potential plus your kinetic final. And that's all it means. I have told you in the past that energy is actually easier to deal with than kinematics. And I'm going to show that to you right now. So let's take a look at an example problem. So let's say a man leaps off a boat and reaches a height of 2.78 meters above the level of the ocean before falling to the water and hitting the water. With what speed will he hit the water? Okay, so one thing I'm going to do from the outset with these kinds of problems is figure out what my initial position is and my final position and start looking for things that you can set equal to zero. So a good example of this is make either your initial height or your final height at zero. That will drop out an entire term for us. I'll show you that in a moment. And we also want to think about, all right, this guy's going to jump up and then down. And we'll just focus on the y-axis. He's probably rotating and he's probably moving in the x-axis as well, but we're just going to focus on the y-axis completely and ignore the rotation and the x-axis motion. All right, so if we're just looking at the y, he jumps up off of the boat, and then for a brief moment of time, he is at the peak. He is at the highest point he will reach, and then he comes down. So if you think about velocity in the y, there is a brief moment of time where his velocity in the y is equal to zero at the peak and then it comes back down. So that zero point is going to be our initial point, so to speak. So it's almost like he's just dropping straight down from this point right here down to the level of the water, which is hard to tell from this perspective, but we'll call it about right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write some of this given information down. We know his height for his initial position is 2.78 meters. His final position is going to be zero. His initial velocity is zero. His final velocity is what we're looking for. So with that, I can get rid of this and save ourselves some room. So I begin with the conservation of energy equation here. So mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. Now what I would say is you should write this and then this as an intro to every one of these problems that you do. But in practice, a lot of people just skip this first step right here. And they know that our total initial mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic. One more thing I want to say is we have talked about two different types of potential energy. If there is no spring in the problem and there's no mention of anything like a spring into the problem, you're dealing with potential due to gravity. And that's typical. This is a lot more common than doing a spring problem, you could say. So most of the time, if someone says potential energy and they're not being very precise in telling you exactly what they mean, then they're talking about gravitational potential energy. All right, and the equations look like this. I've done a couple screencasts on gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. I can put a link to one or both in the upper right. And one of the other things I want to point out is we don't know the mass of this guy. But why does that not matter? It doesn't matter because the masses are in every term. And so what we can do is we can cancel them out in effect by dividing every term by our mass value. So a lot of problems won't even give you the mass of the object that you're dealing with. And that can throw students off at first glance. But what this also means is it doesn't matter how massive the guy is. He's still going to have the same speed the moment before he hits the water down here if he's heavy or if he's light. All right, so let's continue with the problem. And next I want to ask something, and that is, what is zero? Are any of these four terms zero? What do you think? Let's think about his initial speed. What is that going to be? That's going to be zero. So if this V value is zero, it's multiplied by M. It's multiplied by other stuff. It actually doesn't matter because it cancels out. The entire thing cancels out. 
You may have noticed that at this stage of the problem or at this stage of the problem, but it's really crucial that you notice that. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve the problem. Okay, what's one more thing that's going to be zero here? All right, another thing that's going to be zero is our final location is going to be down here. And so that means our height final is going to be zero. That means this entire term drops out. You may have noticed that here, or you may even notice it back here. And so we're going to simplify this equation. We're also going to get rid of our masses because they're in each term that's left over. And this is where we're at right now. And we're looking for this V final value. So that's our unknown. I would encourage you to write a question mark by your unknown at some point in the problem. And then we're just going to isolate for our unknown. And note right at the end, right as we're ready to solve, that's when we're going to plug in our numbers so we don't make mistakes. So we go ahead and plug in our numbers and we solve and we end up with 7.38 meters per second. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Easy stuff if you know what you're doing. Energy is a little more straightforward than dealing with kinematics, although energy is scalar, right? So we don't have information about direction when we're doing this. So you could say energy is easier, but it's also a little less helpful as opposed to kinematics. In any case, I'm gonna give one more screencast that has a common, harder example problem and show you how to do that one in our next screencast. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments, let me know below, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.